This video lesson is on the seven steps to the immune response. If a pathogen enters the body and passes the first line of defense, the body will start the immune response. The immune response involves several different white blood cells, all of which have their own function. The first step to the immune response is that the pathogen has to enter the body. The pathogen is anything that can harm the body, including a bacteria or a virus, and all pathogens, along with all body cells, are identified by what are known as antigens. Antigens are on the marker of all types of cells and are used as identification. Step two in the immune response is that the pathogen has to be identified and marked by the body. This is done by our macrophages. A macrophage is a white blood cell that will engulf or eat up the pathogen and push its antigens to its surface. This will alert the rest of the white blood cells that an invader is in the body. The third step to the immune response is that the macrophage will then signal a helper T cell to make copies of the antigen. This is like a photocopier making copies of a page of your textbook. In step number four of the immune response, the helper T cell will then signal B cells, which is another type of white blood cell in the body, to make antibodies. Antibodies often look like Y-shaped and on their ends match the shape of the antigen. It's important to remember that B cells are responsible for producing antibodies and every antigen has a different antibody that matches like a lock and key. The fifth step of our immune response is that the antibodies will then attach to remaining pathogens that are still running free in the body and immobilize them. This is like putting handcuffs on a criminal to hold them still. Step six of the immune response is that macrophages can now engulf the remaining pathogens, or we can signal another type of white blood cell in the body called killer T cells. And killer T cells, their job is to puncture a hole in the cell membrane of pathogens. And if we puncture a hole in the cell membrane, it will cause death. The seventh and final step of the immune response involves two different types of white blood cells. The first are suppressor T cells, which stop the immune response so that the body isn't using unnecessary energy. And the last one are memory cells, and memory cells are white blood cells that remember the antigen so that next time the invader is encountered, antibodies can be produced much quicker. So these are the seven steps to the immune response. If you're having trouble remembering the seven steps of the immune response, don't forget to check out the Magic Doctor video, which is linked on your CHC Learn or your CHC Files webpage.